now we'll be looking at a quick overview of the muscles of the femur. Again, I won't be going into details of exactly where the origin insertions are. And we'll be doing the individual compartments as well. I just wanted to give an idea of how these muscles are overlying the femur hip bone. Starting with near the head and neck region. See over here. I'm going to make the muscles of the hip bone visible here. For that, let me just uh, right lower limb, right lower leg, thigh, foot. Here we go. Now, if you see here, what I've made visible are actually the gluteal muscles. Now, again, um, don't try to focus so much on the individual muscles themselves, but if you generally see the glutes, these are the muscles which are forming the majority of the shiva are buttocks. Here we can appreciate the right gluteus maximus. And uh, notice how it's inserted into that area, which I told you previously, the gluteal tuberosity right over here. Itself, the gluteus maximus coming from the hip bone, which is not visible over here. But here you can appreciate how it's inserted right here into the gluteal tuberosity. And bear in mind, in this configuration, you can appreciate then how this muscle is responsible for <clears throat> extension of the hip joint. If it's going to be pulling at this area, the femur bone is going to be going backwards. So there'll be extension at the hip joint area. And over here, up above, you can appreciate the gluteus medius as well as the minimus. I'm going to hide this one and just make the others visible. The thing you see outside here is the iliotibial tract. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Here we go. And notice how the medius and the minimus, they're both inserted, here's the medius and the minimus, into the greater trochanter and on the outer area. These are your abductors. When they're going to pull, so obviously they're going to cause movement of the femur in such a way that there will be abduction. So here you can appreciate two abductors. This muscle in the front right here is your tensor facial lap that is inserted into the... Uh, facial lata. Again, it helps in straightening the leg and extension. So, we can touch upon that later. Again, these were your gluteal muscles inserting over here. The next one, let's look at some of the rotator muscles. If you see on the back side, there are a lot of them basically. Again, don't focus on the individual names, but just see okay, how they're all inserting into this fossa I mentioned, the trochanteric fossa, as well as the intertrochanteric crest right over here. The one on top is your piriformis. You can see at the tip of the greater trochanter. Below this triplet here, superior gemellus, inferior gemellus, and the obturator internus. Just want to have an idea of how these muscles were there originating from. Just for your clarity, I'll show you the right hip bone. There we go. Here we go. You see the nice right hip bone and how the muscles are coming from there and they're meeting the femur. Down below the quadratus femoris and right over here obturator and externus as well. So all of these muscles are coming from the hip bone and they're inserting right on the back side of the uh, femur. Now these muscles they are your rotators particularly they are the lateral rotators of the hip because when they pull, if you can visualize it, the femur is going to rotate, zoom out, in a, if you look at from the top view, these muscles will pull, the whole bone will then rotate clockwise from the superior view. This is called lateral rotation. Having that said, another group of muscles to see. Let's look at the thigh muscles. Now for the thigh muscles, let's start with the anterior compartment, the one in front. Looking up in the front and that's a whole lot of muscles to see. But you can see individually how these muscles are covering majority of the shaft. Here is your rectus femoris. If I were to remove it, down below you can appreciate these three muscles. Here is the vastus intermedius, lateralis and the vastus medialis. All of these three are on the shaft. Notice how the vastus lateralis goes nicely with the linea aspera and the lateral lip all the way to the bottom right over here. 
Same case with the vastest medialis, how it goes nicely. Well, up above it doesn't meet with the lineaspora, but it's mostly on the shaft and goes all the way down to the supracondylar ridges right over here. The intermediate one, on the other hand, is cushioned between the two in the center. And uh, if I were to hide this, appreciate the shaft of the bone right over here. This muscle up in front, this strap-like muscle you see here, is your sartorius. Although it doesn't really have uh, an attachment on the uh, femur, it does cross it obliquely. It's originating from the hip bone and it's inserting into the tibia, which is not visualized over here, along with the other muscles forming a pes acernus. You'll see what these were later. So these were your anterior thigh muscles. Medial compartment, here you have all the adductors. Obviously, if you can see the configuration, when they pull on the femur, they're going to cause adduction. Abduction was done by the, glu the glutes and a bit of the lateral rotators, while the adduction is done by your adductors. You have a whole lot, a lot of them. Here's a pectineus, adductor brevis, and longus, I believe, is right over here. Longus. If I were to remove the longus, right behind this, you can appreciate the brevis, and the largest one, the magnus. The magnus is interesting in that it has insertion into the backside, posterior part of the shaft of the femur right over here, right alongside the linea aspera, and the second insertion right over here. You see that, and I told you before, on the epicondyles, two epicondyle here, yes, here you have the adductor tubercle. And this magnus is for, attached to these two points, forming this opening right here, this gap, your adductor hitus. This will be important later on. You'll see how it allows passage of certain structures. And uh, lastly, this one right here is your graceless. Just like the sartois, it's a strap muscles. Finally, the posterior compartment, if you would see this, here you have your hamstring muscles. The hamstrings, and the reason they call them hamstring is because when they used to hang uh, the ham meat, the pig meat, they used to tie up the back legs. So those were with a string, the butchers. So that's why I guess they refer to this area as the hamstring muscles. You can appreciate three muscles here, biceps femoris. Keep in mind, this is not the biceps which is found in your upper limb. It's called biceps femoris. That was biceps brachii. You have semi tendinous and the membranous. Notice how the tendinous right here, uh, this one it is inserting into an area, the exact same area where the sartorius was. This, along with gracilis and the uh, uh, semitendinous sartorius and gracilis, all three are attached to the tibia, and over there they form the pes acernus. Later on, you'll see how it looks like, but for now, we'll just so I'll make it visible for you. You have semitendinous right over here. Let me make the sartorius visible. Sartorius, sartorius. Okay, here we have sartorius visible, and let's put the graceless here as well. There we go. These three muscles, look how they are nice muscles.